Yo, what is up, everybody? Thank you guys for being here for a WTP podcast here today. We are going to be talking about our favorite game. What other game is there? The only game in the world, Splatoon 2. And of course, uh, more so focused on our league, and we'll get to some of your guys' questions as well, but figured this would just be a great time to talk through hey you know we got amateur playoffs coming up in um what is that one week plus two days nine days so that's coming quick we already have seen the playoffs for academy and for pro league so there is that to potentially talk about although we'll probably do a full season wrap up I don't know, probably sometime after the amateur playoffs end, which is just in two weeks since their playoff is just one week. So that will happen uh, at a future date, but I think it'd still be fun if you guys want to talk through some of the yeah pro and academy playoffs. They have finished, so it's just we're just left with the amateur for two more weeks, and then we got to figure out <laughs> what next to do, so... Of course, we have some thoughts on the way from our uh, four league managers and some of our other staff who will eventually be working on it. And hopefully there's going to be an announcement. Uh, It's definitely going to come after the amateur league. So it won't happen until April, probably within an official announcement. And I believe I saw some of you guys in Discord talking about how Ludi is actually going to happen. So cheers to that. I did not believe my eyes. Ludi is for real happening, guys. It's crazy, but it is. And I'm excited to see you guys play in that. I don't know who here has a team that's going to be playing in Ludi. If you guys are signing up for it, let me know. I, I want to know how many of you guys are, are playing in it. I'm interested to see. I'm sure there's tons of teams that are still going to be playing it. Why is that mug so big? Well, let me tell you, Dino. Let me tell you this. The story of the mug. The story is, I made myself a latte. 
that's that's the story. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can see it without me spilling it. Up. And when you make a latte, you don't you don't just put it in anything. You put it in a big latte sized mug. All right, all right. So that's it. That's the story. It's a bowl with a handle. I mean, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> mhm. Mm so. As you guys have seen probably in the past, if you want to join the lobby live, you can. We can have you on the call. It would be lovely to get some of you, uh, especially the ECL clan. Yeah, if we want to get Eclipse in here, we didn't get to do a winner's interview with you guys. So, uh, The podcast channel, if you just go to the WTP Discord, you hit up the podcast takes. Let me know that you want to talk about something. Join the podcast lobby. I'll pull you into the live channel. That one is locked. That one is hidden because I know some people will try to troll and just jump in and, be like, blah, 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 and then leave. So we're not going to do that today. But if you do want to join us, feel free to do so. And yes, that, that is one of the things to talk about. Thank you for reminding me, Dino. We had our first psychic winner, Shermy808, taking the eShop code of $20 with the 50,000 channel point cash out. I was getting worried that no one would be able to get it over the season. And I was like, maybe Dino has a chance. I didn't even know Shermie had that many, but apparently Shermie did. <laughs> and Shermie has now received the first psychic title. But of course, what we're gonna do with the uh, psychic title, I really like that as a channel point redemption. It's something to work towards. Uh, it's kind of like this long-term goal with your channel points is that you can take the title and maybe we need to make a graphic or something. I don't know how to display who the psychic is. Maybe it's just like in the corner uh, or maybe we, when we show uh, channel point predictions, we, we flip over to that graphic and you know, we have the crown of Shermie right now. I don't know, but uh, I, I like that as the, the channel point goal going to the future. So Instead of just saying, hey, Shermie won it, it's over. Now the bar is set, bar set, I believe, at 75k for the channel point psychic. Someone confirm. I can't actually tell with my... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can. 75,000. So that will be pretty hype to see if someone can actually reach out to 75,000. Dino sounds like you're halfway there. Bummer for you though, because if it was still at 50,000, you'd be so dang close and now you're just over halfway. So pain for Dino, pain for everyone else trying to catch up. I don't even know who would be the, the closest one to Dino. I wish in Twitch you could see how many people have what channel points. I don't believe that's possible. If someone knows of a thing, that'd be cool. We could have like a channel point leaderboard. That would make it even more intense. That would make it even more hype. But unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't design a channel point leaderboard. Maybe I should Google it though, because Google will tell me the answer. So <laughs> let's see. Hey, Solar, how's it going? What's up, my dude? How you doing? Channel point leaderboard Twitch. I think someone's just writing a form about it. Yep, someone is requesting this from Twitch, but it doesn't look like there's a way currently, which is a big bummer. Well, maybe they'll add it one day and we can have this giant channel point battle going back and forth. But yeah, if anyone wants to jump into the call, feel free to do so. If not, uh, I might as well start with my thoughts. Because one of the biggest things coming up is the Amateur League playoffs. You can see I already have the graphic pulled up, so might as well start there. Although, let's see if I can pull it a little too... <laughs> oh, well, I'll just... Maybe I'll just zoom it out by one. Is that too small for you guys? Whatever. Okay, we'll zoom in and just pull it to the side. All right. So, amateur playoff race. We have one week left. Here's where we're at. Here are the five teams. And let me let me think through this in my head. 
I potentially think Red Sun. Who did Red Sun lose to? It's all they've only lost West Broadway and to Zylo. So they've pretty much locked a playoff spot because they're two teams. Oh, okay. JK, JK. There is one scenario where they haven't they haven't locked their playoff spot. Red Suns four and two. They've beat RG, Owo Gang, and Kraken Warriors. So if they tie with any of those teams at four and four, somehow let's say they actually lose. I don't predict this. I doubt it will happen. But we gotta talk about it because it's a possibility, right? I really don't think they're gonna lose. But if they happen to lose two games, the only other team they would have lost to is Symphony. And that's in this playoff race. Cherry Girl with a sub too. Oh my goodness. Cherry Girl! Cherry Girl! Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. 38? Holy crap, 38? Oh, it went to me! Heck yeah! Let's go! Double the benefits. I haven't even been able to use my own emotes when I've been logged into my alt account. <laughs> wow, Cherry Girl popping off once again. Much love. So, as I talk about Red Sun, if they beat Symphony or Tent Supremacy, they're in. If they lose to Symphony, and another team ties up four and four, there is a possibility where Red Sun still doesn't make the playoffs when it comes down to tiebreakers. They would have to throw really hard though. And I just don't see that happening. So they're not locked yet. They're not officially mathematically locked, but you know, theoretically 99% chance, okay? So then we move to the team that has the next best chance to make playoffs. I'm going to assume Red Sun, let's say Red Sun's locking in third. Then we're down to four teams, Kraken Warriors, Symphony, OO Gang, and regular gamers that have a shot at playoffs. Okay. Now here's the thing though. Kraken Warriors, here's how they make playoffs. If they beat Zylo, they're in. That's it. Re regular gamers, OO Gang, Symphony cannot catch them out of five and three record. However, they are playing Xylo, the undefeated team. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Let's just assume they lose because they're, they're playing against Xylo. That means they finish 4-4. Four four. Now, here's where it gets crazy. They can finish at 4-4. Four and four. Regular Gamers can finish at 4-4. Four and four, And OO Gang can finish at 4-4. Four and four. If that happens, we do head-to-head -head records. And if there's a rock, paper, scissors scenario, then it would go to games, uh, amount of games won versus amount of games lost. However, Kraken Warriors has already beaten regular gamers and OO gang. So if those three teams tie, then Kraken Warriors automatically gets through. However, there is a crazier scenario. Uh, well, that scenario also applies if Kraken Warriors just ties with one of these teams, OO Gang, or just ties with regular gamers. Okay. And maybe I didn't update this because regular gamers only has one more game. So regular gamers are sitting at three and four. So that's not. Lulz. Update, update. Just They just have West Broadway to play against. Okay. Ambient gold in the background. Good. You should. I feel like we need to have Cherry on the podcast. We should just have our, our number one donator on the podcast. Cherry Gold, get in here. <laughs> get on stream. Okay. Uh, what was this thing? So, Kraken Warriors, if they tie with three of the gamers, or OO Gang, GG's, Kraken Warriors moves on. If, however, Symphony ties they win against redstone and oo gang in the last week going from 04 to 44 then symphony can tie with kraken warriors they beat kraken warriors so if it's just kraken warriors and symphony that tie up from four symphony makes the miracle run makes playoffs if symphony ties a four and four and kraken warriors tie up four or four and they tie with oo gang or regular gamers then we could have a situation where it comes down to game records because each team has beat each other. So, uh, essentially, what it's coming down to 
Kraken Warriors make playoffs unless Symphony pulls off the miracle run and it ends 4-4. So if you're a regular gamers fan or an Oboe Gang fan, essentially what you're rooting for is not only for your team to win, but then they need Symphony to win. They need Kraken Warriors to lose so that can there can be a three or four way tie. All right. It would be insane. It would be insane. It's possible. You happen to be on the weekends. Okay. Uh, especially when the, now that the pro scene is done, we could probably have a podcast uh, this Sunday. I'm gone, but maybe next, uh, well, the next one's Easter. So in a couple weeks, uh, maybe a Saturday or Sunday cherry girl. That'd be awesome. And Debbie, yes, these are quite the scenarios. <laughs> so here's my predictions. That's that's all the possible scenarios. Here's my predictions. My predictions here. Kraken Warriors, they play Zylo, they lose 4-4. Symphony, I think they have a good shot with how they've played the last couple weeks of taking down Owo Gang. I still think Red Sun just beat Symphony. It may be closer than what we expect, but I still think Red Sun will pull through in a best of five. Shutting down Symphony. Not only shutting down Symphony, but shutting down Ray of the Gamers and shutting down OO Gang. So if you're a Kraken Warrior fan or a Kraken Warrior player, you don't even need to win. All you need to do is root for Red Sun beating Symphony and all those other scenarios go away. So... The first two match stream is going to tell us a lot because it's Red Sun versus Tent Supremacy and Red Sun versus Symphony. If Red Sun beats that Symphony game, it's it's all over because Red Sun clinch and Kraken Warriors clinch. So uh, that that is my prediction. If somehow Symphony beats Red Sun, I still see Kraken Warriors winning because I... I don't see Ray of the Gamers beating West Broadway, even though Ray of the Gamers played really, really well against Red Sun. They had a chance to pull off that upset. I just don't see them beating uh, WBG. And then even if Symphony goes 4-4, Kraken Warriors go 4-4, uh, Owo Gang, well, for so for Symphony to win and go 4-4, they would have to be Owo Gang making Owo Gang three and five, unless they beat Xylo tonight. So predictions, Kraken Warriors, too many scenarios where Kraken Warriors has the upper hand. And it feels bad because I feel like Kraken Warriors and Ray the Gamers and even, even Symphony in the last couple of weeks um, have been playing at all pretty good levels. Uh, J, J Tistic? I don't know if I said your name right, but thank you so much for the follow. By the way, if anyone wants to join the podcast, remember that there is a podcast take spot open in the WTP Discord. Jtistic, how is it going? Hope you're doing well. So all that to say, I, I think it's going to be Kraken Warriors. Maybe my second guess is Symphony. If OO Gang loses tonight, I think they're mathematically eliminated because they would have to beat Symphony, which means Symphony doesn't tie. Uh, it feels bad because it's been a really close season. Regular Gamers at the beginning of the season lost to Kraken Warriors uh, in Game 5, right? If you guys remember. That was one of the closest series, and it was Week 1. That pretty much... Uh, is coming back to bite regular gamers because if regular gamers had won that they would have all these scenarios they would be the ones in the driver's seat of the playoff spot but because kraken warriors won that because kraken warriors has gotten some other great wins i think they deserve the playoff spot and i think they will get it i i feel bad for anyone who gets the fourth playoff spot anyways because unless xylo throws this last week <laughs> and loses to obo gang and to Kraken Warriors, that means whoever's the fourth seed is gonna have to play Xylo first week, first match of the playoffs. It's gonna be pretty dang difficult. So I'm interested to see what will happen. Of course, this is just Friday, so we'll get to see in two days. So if that's the case, all right, see you, Debbie. Thanks for uh, 
thanks for checking us out. I hope you have a good time at your work. And uh, good luck to you and your matches on Friday. Close out the season against Ray the Gamers. Hope you guys uh, do well for your sake. <laughs> Although, it, I don't think it will matter too much as far as seeding. Unless Zylo throws, West Broadway Grillers lost to Zylo. So they're probably going to be locking in second seed. Which means, playoff picture. It's simple format. It's just four teams. Seed one plays seed four. Seed two plays seed three. So, unless one of those crazier scenarios happen, what we're looking at is Zylo versus Kraken Warriors for the first playoff match. Which, they are playing each other on Friday. So we'll get a good idea if Kraken Warriors has any chance at beating them and getting that insane upset. Then, one of the most hyped matchups... Number two seed versus number three seed, West Broadway versus Red Sun, which last time it went to a crazy game five where each team, just the small moments of the series could have gave the other team the win. Red Sun did lose to West Broadway in game five, but it was a really close series. It could have gone either way. So I'm expecting in that playoff to have another hype series between them, which is going to be a best of seven. So if the best of five between those two teams were that hype, then just imagine a best of seven. Like that's just going to be one of my favorite matchups probably all season long. Prediction from there, of course, is uh, whoever wins that is going to face Zylo in the finals. I, I don't know. I, I still give Zylo the upper hand in taking it all. But honestly, I've seen West Broadway and Red Sun putting up some great performances in the last couple of weeks. They're really good teams as well. I think Zylo's a decent favorite to win it all for amateur. But I think West Broadway and Red Sun have definitely, I don't know, maybe each of them have a, what I would say is like a 20% chance to pull it off. So they have 20, 20, and then like Zylo has 59% chance. And then whoever... Whoever uh, is the four seed, I'm going to give them like a 1% chance to <laughs> potentially take it all. It would be it'd be an incredible, crazy run that no one would have predicted. No one would have expected. I'm not saying those teams are bad. I'm just saying, man, if you're coming in the fourth seed, having to take on Zylo, number one, and then in the final take on West Broadway or Red Sun, that's a tough task to ask from the fourth best regular season team. So... I'm curious to see how that will go. Uh, yes, IPS, join in. Join in, my dude. So that that's essentially the amateur playoff picture that's going to be happening. Uh, the wrap-up of the regular season, all those scenarios going to be determined Friday, March 26th, so in two days. And then the playoffs are going to happen on April 2nd, so nine days from now. And... I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I've loved watching the amateur or sorry, academy and the pro tier. So I'm excited to see what will happen for the. Oh, gosh. OK, sorry. I'm trying to move in IPS to the call. IPS is now here. What's up, my dude? Not much. How about you, man? Doing pretty swell. Just talking through all the crazy amateur scenarios. Oh, yeah. Well, in my opinion, there's only one scenario that's probably going to happen. But, you know, <laughs> Zylo wins. Yeah, well, yeah, but as well, just in playoffs in general, I feel like, you know, the top, excuse me, the top four is pretty much already set unless something crazy happens. Yeah. Yeah, unless Red Sun loses to Symphony, that will, if that happens, which is, is you know, maybe what, like 15% possible? I mean, what, what odds do you give Symphony beating Red Sun? Symphony is being two teams, right? What was the... Yeah, because they got to win against yeah. Resilience. They won the against Kraken Warriors last week, and then uh, before right, yeah, that, that was... they beat Resilience. Well, they kind of did. They had the, you know, DQ uh, win. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't... I, like, Symphony, yeah, did beat Kraken Warriors, and that was, like, pretty surprising, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, Red, Red Sun, West Broadway, and Zyler are just, like just above that, you know? And I feel like, I just don't think, you know, Symphony's going to beat them. They could maybe make it a close set yeah. if they're playing on their A game, but I still feel like Reds is going to end up taking it in the end, at least. Yeah. And if that happens, it pretty much locks in Kraken Warriors, the four seed. So 
Uh, pretty much what I've said is I feel bad for whoever's the fourth seed. I'm going to give them like a 1% chance of winning it all anyways. <laughs> but <laughs> in yeah. my mind, uh, you can tell me if, if you're thinking differently. But what I've said is West uh, Broadway Grillers and Red Sun, I'm giving them to take it all uh, about a 20% chance each. Uh, I'm giving Zylo a 59% chance and whoever's the fourth seed a 1% miracle chance. Do you feel like that's fair? Xylo is gonna probably be a woe gang it like tonight, right? Yeah, there's not gonna be streaming unfortunately, but like they're gonna be they're yeah. gonna be a I mean it gang. doesn't matter. They're gonna be the number one yeah. seed unless they yeah. throw both games yeah. to a woe yeah. and Kraken Warriors. And then if Xylo destroys Kraken Warriors and like this Friday and you know which they probably will in my opinion then there isn't a lot of hope for Kraken Warriors in uh, the playoffs. It's just going to be a repeat of the last regular season, like pretty much their last regular season matchup. They're just going to have to do a rematch that's a BO7. So, I mean, while then West Broadway and Redstone, whichever teams win then, then goes against Silo, right? I feel like if Redstone is playing on their A game, and they play like they did against Zylo, for example, um, that one week where they went 3-2, uh, sorry, 2-3 against Zylo, right? Mm-hmm. In my opinion, they'll be able to take down West Broadway without too much hassle if they play at their best. Because I feel like when West Broadway beat them, I don't think Redson was like 100%, I'm going to be honest. I don't feel like they were. Sure. I feel like they were making a lot of mistakes they usually don't make. So, like, in my opinion, you know, yeah. if Redson is on their A game, and then they go ahead and beat West Broadway, and then they go against Zylo, they have a chance to beat them if they can outplay Zylo, but I still would give the edge mostly to Zylo. Then on the other hand, like West Broadway is just... If they beat Red Sun, you know, then I don't really see them at all beating Zylo in general, in my opinion. All right, well, that's a spicy take. I still think West Broadway has a a chance, but we'll see. I mean... They did beat Red Sun, as you're talking about, and Red Sun almost took down Zylo, but the thing that scares me the most is they, they lost in game five, I believe, and that was without Neo or No from Zylo. So if Zylo has their full roster, I'm just like, ooh, this is going to be tough for any team to really take them down. Yeah. I feel like I, I think Neo is going to be definitely playing, though. That like He's going to be wanting to play those finals and semis. Yeah, so. I I would assume that they would try to bring their A game unless some emergency mm-hmm. happened or something pulled them yeah, away. Yeah, pretty much. I don't see a scenario where they don't bring their best roster, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it should be interesting. It should be good. But now that we have you on the call, I, I saw some people wanting to mm-hmm. talk about, and we don't have to do like a full recap or anything, but right. some people were asking about the Academy Finals. So. You being uh, one of the commentators, I would uh, I'd be uh, interested to hear from you what right. you, your thoughts were on the Academy Finals. Now let's go to my thoughts. I'm gonna start with my thoughts before the say even began. Right, so both teams with five zero in groups. Uh, Outcast dropped two games and then like really close at the deadlock, and Eclipse didn't drop a single game. And what I was thinking in my head, right, was okay. It really seems like looking at these KAs and looking at what happens in the games, it seems like just Grey does a lot while the rest of the team just kind of waddles around, paints, maybe gets a pick here and there, but usually they're enabling Grey. So what I was thinking going into that set, you know, like watching that set, was just, all right, if Outcast can shut down Grey and then kill the rest, mm-hmm. they can win, you know? But... I guess uh, the people on Eclipse must have noticed that that was an issue, you know, <laughs> and actually fixed it, which, you know, we saw in, like, that set. We had, like, Gray, Gray was still getting a lot of kills himself, like, usually, but you had Sulfur, you had, like, Dialga, and you had, like, uh, I think it was Lucio. Like, they were still, you know, backing up and getting kills themselves. Mm-hmm. They were winning fights. I think Sulfur got, like, a triple one point or something, you know. Yeah. Like, they, they fixed that issue. So that was, that was a surprise to me because I didn't think they would because... I think one thing that impacted them a lot was the loss of Murkat. Not in a sense as in, oh, he gets a bunch of kills or he can't. No, it's just like, because Murkat and Gray would just be able to go in together and like you would see, it, like one of them would slay a bunch and then the other one would basically be behind cleaning up. 
Mm-hmm. And I felt like once they lost Murkat, they lost that until now, where basically they decided, okay, we lost Murkat, but what if we, what if the rest of us decided to clean up instead? And, you know, that's what they decided to do, decided to clean up instead and do, make plays of their own as well. Meanwhile, Outcast Ninjas, like, you know, I don't know, maybe they, like, I don't know what was going through their heads, but in my opinion, it looked like they were playing with so much pressure on their shoulders, like, mm-hmm. At one point, they had two down. I remember it was the Rainmaker Snapper game. They had two down on Eclipse, and the Eclipse players were backing up. Right. And they just sit there and panic, and then push through Bunker. And I was just sitting there like, that's, you know, <laughs> I, I haven't seen someone push through there in a long time because it is the worst place to push with right. the Rainmaker. Good. You know, and it's just. I feel like they were definitely playing with just like scared, I guess, because there was just a lot of moments where they could have pushed up or could have made a play and they just didn't. Right. And then there was times where they panicked and, you know, what, like for example, the TC game on Ancho, they should have won that, but oh, Shins that rolled off the tower. He rolled off the tower and died. Yeah. And I like, think that was, uh, what, what game was, that was like game number four, right? And I feel like that was a turning point in the series because they should have won that game or easily could have. Obviously, they didn't. But that turned the series from being a 2-2 tie where they're having some momentum to all of a sudden this 3-1 hole as the underdogs. Like You never want to be in it down 3-1 in the best of nine when you're already the underdogs. You know th- th- That's just always going to be a rough spot to yeah. try to battle back from. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, Speaking of Eclipse, right? Uh, I think Silver's waiting in the podcast. Probably, okay, but, yeah, but no, yeah, you know, you know, I think I want to, I want to talk about this with him, right? So okay, well, he's speaking here now, of think, e- speaking of Eclipse, right? You know, uh, there is basically a league called uh, TSW, which is called the Scrim Wars. It's kind of like a practice league type thing where you do like scrims every week and whatnot. So I signed up my friend group to it because we just wanted to chill and have fun, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, man, uh, oh, would you look at that? Who we got matched up for week one of the regular season? Eclipse, the team that's gonna beat you. <laughs> right, whatever you say, man. Like, if you could be a plus two, like half a plus two of half a plus three pickup, then good on you. But yeah, I'm just thinking. Right, we go in Sunday and we win four zero. Done. Wait, which uh, tournament? I don't think so. Which tournament is it again? It's uh, it's kind of a league type thing. It's oh, called yeah. the Scrum Wars. Uh, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of ran like this, except uh, it's a really like flowy schedule and not as like many streams. Sure. But <laughs> so yeah, I so I think my you're, you're representing Eclipse here as the Academy uh-huh. champions. So I, I don't know. Did you catch any of our conversation previous to you jumping in the call? A little bit. Okay, so what what were uh, your thoughts on the on the finals as the victors? We were going in with passion. <laughs> we were like, nah, 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 nah. I, people be like complimenting Owen, like, and just ignoring us. No, we ain't gonna let that fly. <laughs> and did, like, did you guys feel more pressure be, being the ones that a lot of people were predicting to win, or did that? not really affect you guys at all uh we were we were really stressed like dude i was literally having nervous laughs basically the entire like beginning (laughs) of the set which is interesting (laughs) because joe ryan in the chat also said he was shaking from you know outcast ninjas so (laughs) it sounds like both of you guys were were flipping out uh, quite a bit there yeah yeah i i get nervous easily so like like even like especially during like big moments like even the small moments like i i remember uh whenever we went against murkwood like the very first uh, wait no not murkwood uh eternal eternal yes whenever we are going against eternal i don't know why but like i was having a massive nervous breakdown like during the whole set and like even though we won 3-0 Literally, I, I was straight, shink, uh, shaking and almost, <laughs> uh, shaking and almost crying by the end of this set oh for like goodness. no apparent reason. And then I had to stream like right after that, so I'm like, okay, um, 
how am I? Uh, Yikes. Kinda... Yikes. So, as I'm curious, as uh, you've played more and more with Eclipse, have the nerves gone down? Has it gotten any easier? Or is it still kind of the same thing every time for you? Nerves have gone down a lot. It's just more of a... Like, you gotta have confidence in yourself and, like, just to make sure that, like, you do your end so everyone else can do everything else. <laughs> Especially as a support player, you know? Like, you gotta be on point or else the whole team kind of falls apart. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, maybe IPS will have a different perspective so you can let me know IPS, but I feel like when watching that, at least from the... The clips of the you know the camera being on you, Solver, during the finals. I felt like you played better in the finals than I've seen you play in in the rest of the regular season. Not that you played bad, but you know we've always been talking yeah. about Gray as the pop off star. But even as a support player, I feel like you did pretty well in the finals. You know, so did you feel I, I think, better about it? I th I did feel really good about it. But honestly, I feel like the unsung hero here definitely Lucio. Hmm. Like he got. He got so many picks, used used missiles at like the opportune times, and his positioning was really great throughout the mostly the entire thing. Yeah, I mean, IPS. Who do you agree with that, or did you have a kind of a different I mean, perspective? I mean, I was just thinking the whole team in general. Like y'all were just like the main thing was like whenever Gray went in to do stuff that Gray does instead of like what should have happened, where he should have gone picked off, and then Alcazar should have moved with that. You guys ended up going in with him, and if he died, like, getting one, you would clean up the guy that was weak or, like, two that were weak, and you would end up getting, like, basically a team fight win while only losing one person. You know, mm -hmm. so I feel like it's just the main thing you guys did pretty well, and that's, like, honestly, so I don't really see as one person did a bunch of stuff like the past, like, pretty much in regular season, because in regular season, all I was thinking was, right, they just sit there and do things while Gray drops a twenty four bomb for no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah. And then in the finals you act you guys actually like did things. So they literally made you guys play like ten times better. Mm-hmm. Honestly, my favorite moment, like during that entire set, like just watching the streams back from uh, your guys' perspective and then Jorian's perspective was uh um I uh like that, that uh, snapper canal game. Uh, we had gotten like I believe two down, but like all of us were just kind of painting together like forward and like I don't know why, but it just felt like like a Avengers End Game type thing. I was like, <laughs> I literally laughed at myself for thinking that, but like I thought it was hilarious at the time. <laughs> yeah, it's inter right. interesting just looking through the stats here that. You know, there there really wasn't a weak player on the team, kind of as you were saying, IPS. I mean, obviously, Gray is, of course, topping the boards every time, but that's kind of expected. Kind of. Uh, yeah. Don't show my death count. Don't show my death count. You can't Let's see, see how that. How many times no. did Silver die during the finals? <laughs> One plus six, seven, 14, uh, 19. Let's see, 27. 32 and 36 times you died, so no, no. <laughs> uh, yo. uh. you see, you see, you know what's better about Junior? You die less and actually stay alive and spam bombs and pay <laughs> nah. and also get picked. But it's the wuss move, it's the wuss move. The wuss move, you say that, but you can actually there, there is more to Junior than just painting and spamming bombs. It's just that I know if seven juniors don't do, just sit there and spam bombs and oh. paint, and that's it. That's what I Dude, I, I, I secondary junior. I, I know the... Uh, the yeah, Balrog. How aggressive you can play it. And how... All right, yeah. I, I need to see if we can find the clip of that... What was it? Game 4 we said? Uh, yeah. Snapper Canal. It was... Uh, uh, I think it was at the 2 minute mark or something like that. I don't know. Let's see it was kind of later on. <laughs> uh, it... it we just stopped the push, but I don't know. That'll probably yeah, take a second just, to find. I Yo, so I got a question. Freaking out during that. So I got a question. How, do you guys just, have you guys decided who's uh, going to be playing on Sunday? Oh, I uh, not yet. We typically just go with the flow, really. All right, fair enough. And we only know your weapons, so we can't really make a counter comp. 
Yeah, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> huh. But, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm confident we're going to beat you guys because, right, in the end, you guys, yeah, you guys played really well in Academy, you know, to your finals and won Academy, like us, Champions Academy, but you got to remember also, it's, a, it, it's Academy. We also played a counter comp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, oh. but... Dude, that was actually a really fun comp, though. Like, seriously, like, we pulled it out, like, the Friday night beforehand. Because, like, everyone was busy that week, but, like, even though, like, that happened, like, we honestly had, like, a great time with it, like, and, like, everything just kind of clicked. Oh. Except for Dialga. Dialga said that he'll never play 96 again. <laughs> <laughs> what weapon is he gonna play? That man plays, like, 70 weapons. I'm just so sad uh, looking over this clip, man. <laughs> well, I kind of can't tell you that right now, IPS, because you were playing against you Sunday, but... Yeah. Another <laughs> Russian roulette. Gonna no, have to tell him, tell him all your strategies right now. I'm pretty sure you guys already know what I'll play. I mean, yeah, you <laughs> play support, Lucio's got splatlings, uh, great shot, uh, oh. losses. Yeah, Dialga's whatever the hell. Uh, I, I forgot who okay. else. Okay, alright, alright. Uh, I... Yeah? I, I think IPS, your team's going to smash them. That's fine. Okay, let's move on. I have a more... Are discussions are fun. I, I have <laughs> another discussion question that I think is more relevant. Ooh. because Fair enough, yeah. Because IPS, you helped me and a few others determine the, the rankings, the placements for teams. And there's more than a few people who said, uh, why is Eclipse in the Academy League? So, oh, I remember this. Oh my so first god! I'll, right. First, I'll ask Solver, and then I'll turn it to IPS. But Solver, do you feel uh, like you were worthy of the amateur tier? And if so, what place do you think you would have finished if you guys were in the amateur league? I believe we were deserving of it. I remember this conversation because uh, Eclipse only had like two tournaments under like their current their current composition at the time which was like sack one and i believe like i don't know some sort of low ink or something like that but i think well i don't know uh i would say six through fourth six through four so kind of the crack and warrior raider gamer owo gang level yeah, because we have actually uh, grimmed uh, OO Gang a few times, and all of them, we uh, we did pretty well against them. Uh, I believe we won the scrims, but again, scrims don't matter. I, I don't really care about that. It's, sure. uh, but I think we would have gotten at least uh, through the mid-tiers, yeah. I don't think I don't think we can fight up like a fight against like Xylo, uh, or S Broadray or something like that though. Sure. Yeah. Right. So here, here's where I'm gonna go on a little bit of rant. So okay, all right, right. IPS rant now, time. That's the best. Okay. Time. So, so okay. First of all, start of the season stuff. Right. Everyone was ready going, but the Alga, but the Alga. If like, dude, I'm sorry. Right. Okay. This is like no offense to Dialga. Right. Okay. He used to be really, really good back then. Like, but this, mm -hmm. that was, like, for example, people used to reference the clip in his bio. Not the bio, like, the clip in his Twitter that he pinned. That yeah, was course. in 2019, <laughs> right? Yeah, he exactly. Can't... Like, even yeah, he it's... says that, like, he's still kind of rusty, like, yeah. from back in the day. Like, and, he's... and, yeah, and I and even tried thing, to... Right? Yeah, and basically... When he came back, uh, I remember I would just see him ping for like public pings usually around the place. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so what I, we have there is that some people mistaken him as a plus two member because he had plus two pings, which is a fun fact, right? When the server was public, like just a public plus server, you could get plus two pings as a non plus two member. It doesn't mean you're in plus two. So there's some people just trying to use that, which was like, uh, you're dumb. Yeah. Then yeah, the some. Other we even tried to get accession requests for Dialga and like the low ink and stuff like that, but he's still being denied. Yeah, it's just because probably the thing to of him playing two years ago. But again, you know, when he became when he, when he used to do these pickups and such, I've played with him a couple of times. It's just like, you know, he's you know, like I'm not gonna call him bad because he's not bad, but in my opinion, he's not insane as some people overreact that he is. 
He's yeah, he left. is a little overhyped, but like he is slowly improving. Like seriously though, like I have noticed like a pretty good improvement. I mean, yeah, since I joined all, the all, team. yeah, all of you are improving, so that's the main thing there. But at the time, like it's just no, nah, like they just because Dialga is there doesn't mean they're an amateur level team. Never was the reason because you know yeah when I when I was early in Phantom in like late 2019 and such as that, like I would just see him do pickups, and he even then he wasn't like amazing. So it's just kind of like, it's just pretty much that people kind of overhyped them. Actually, wait, was that late twenty nine? Was that late twenty nineteen or late twenty twenty? I forgot. I believe yeah, he whatever. played in uh, testing grounds in twenty nineteen. Or uh, Plus, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think he kind of took a break in twenty twenty. Yeah, the, the yeah. twenty nineteen. The thing is, right, he used to interact with, like, the community as well a bunch, I feel like. And it's just, you know, and when he, you know, now that he's come back, he's just not as good as he was. And, you know, like, he's, he could be, like, if he got a bit better again and just, you know, maybe stuck to a more concise weapon pool, he could be able to get into plus three, maybe. But even then, he's just, you know, he's gotten rusty, like, a lot. You know, and probably the reason they banned him from Loink is because Loink isn't a tournament to de-rust. That's the that's probably the reason they have him still banned. That that that's the first reason. Then after that, it's like I don't know. know. I think it's I think it's that I think we ask a little bit uh, too much out of him. Like sometimes, like we ask him to go like this weapon that he really hasn't played in a while, and like I don't know. I feel like once we get like more concise comps on Eclipse, I feel like he and along with everyone else will definitely improve a lot more. Yeah, I feel like that should be a thing I should just prioritize, just getting, like, your weapon pools concise to see what weapons you're going to play, and with those weapons, we make comps. Yeah. And, I mean, then, right, the other thing is, like, I feel like a lot of the Academy teams just lost to Eclipse, and we're like, oh, but, you know, Eclipse is too strong, and it's like, literally, you know, Eclipse did not lose a game in the groups, but Outcast, you know, pretty much destroyed the most teams in their group as well. Except for Deadlock. Mm -hmm. They only dropped then, a game against Mirkwood in the semis. Yeah, and, you know, meanwhile, Outcast 4 0 in the semis. And then Outcast, you know, I feel like the set between Eclipse and Outcast should have been closer, but Outcast are just playing a very, like, I mean, they were just scared. 5 they had 2 a lot of nerves. isn't 5 2 isn't necessarily, like, not close. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a it's a good sized I, win, but obviously, if they had five, won three, that game four like, yeah. by I one feel point. Like, then then it could have been easily a 5-3, five, 5-4 five, series even. I feel like ON made a lot of mistakes that cost him games. Like, uh, that tower control match, uh, they, uh, I know, like, that last point push, uh, they got all the way down to, like, 48 to 47, and then, and then they tried to go for kills after that instead of staying on objective which i think cost him the game there yeah it did cost him the game or even that rainmaker pushed through bunker <laughs> yeah no but yeah uh, right another thing right like okay when it came by looking now near the end of the season what i feel like for academy and amateur i feel like eclipse was definitely like did have a good advantage above like it, it had it was a time it was a deep there was an okay gap between eclipse and pretty much all of academy against outcast the out against outcast the clap is a little bit closer but it pretty much just didn't matter because you know you guys fixed your issues that made mm -hmm. that gap close and then outcast and it just yeah. kind of just flopped in some cases and i think that's the and, thing mm -hmm. too and so i mean first of all thank you for a tip to 20 dollars to anonymous whoever <laughs> that is thank you but i think one of the things that people react to at the end of the season is like wait how did this team get into uh, academy or amateur or whatever they won like weren't they clearly this good but you also have to recognize like this is a season that's going over two months and I feel like for the, at least the Academy, I think Amateur is different, but I feel like Academy, really the two teams that were really focused on improving were Outcast and Eclipse. And I think that's why they made the finals where yeah. a team like, uh, you know, Mirkwood, I think they're, they're really just here to, you know, hang out with friends, have fun, and maybe they're trying to improve, but it wasn't like they're, you know, grinding like an Eclipse was. 
or like even a oh, deadlock yeah, where I think they play, wanted like, to grind, but then their team kind of fell apart because they're, you know, a, a few players left and whatever the drama happened. Then it turned out disbanded. Yeah. That was another thing yeah. that happened. Team Fire yeah, uh, dropped, you know, just a lot of things. So I think yeah. I think Eclipse and Outcast were definitely the top two teams going into it, but I think they also improved over the season. So that's why it seemed like there was even a bigger gap at the end of the season than there was in the beginning. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah, we, uh, I know from Eclipse's angle that – we would typically like practice like most days of the week. Like we would rarely drop a practice, uh, and like, and then especially like coming up, like I think near the end, we were definitely a lot more pressured to practice because it's like I was out of town like all the way until like the Thursday night before the um the finals. And, like, all of us were just, like, in panic mode because, like, <laughs> uh, we aren't going to be able to practice with our comp until Friday. So we're all just like, okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? And then Dialog is like, oh, hey, uh, you guys want to pull out this comp against double armor? I'm like, <laughs> And we're all like, hmm, that seems reasonable enough. Uh, about, like, three league games in, Rage tries to scrim. And it turns out they had double armor comp as well. They're, and then we're, we're like, oh, this is perfect to practice against. Yeah. We we destroyed them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, I got to gotta close off the stream and go to work here soon. So, uh, mm -hmm. Silver, I, I want to give you one last chance. Represent Eclipse. Maybe we can get the whole team on some other time. But how, just, you know, take a minute or so. How did it feel to win finals? Uh, It felt great. Uh, uh, I, 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 I hit my desk and hurt my hand. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> in celebration or what? In celebration. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, we were all really happy just, uh, just to really pull out that win, especially like just how well we played, like, like that, that was like a new us that like we've never even seen before. Yeah, that day, and like, it it definitely showed like the potential we have to grow. Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys could win, and thanks for jumping on for a little bit, and thanks IPS as well. And of mm -hmm. course, two days we'll have the last week of the amateur league, and then of course playoffs the following week. And in future podcasts, we'll get hopefully more of a chance to talk about that and maybe some of the pro stuff that went on that was a little spicy. So we'll get a chance to talk about that. And stay tuned because hopefully in a few weeks we can have some announcements coming out about what we're potentially thinking about season four. And maybe eventually we can talk a little bit about Ludia, I guess, is happening again. So uh, oh, some yeah. interesting stuff going it's on. It's actually yeah. coming soon. It's guys. actually it's... coming soon. For once, their tweet <laughs> was legit. <laughs> actually, 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 yo, yo, yo. Uh, okay, right now, Solver, what div do you think Eclipse Gaming deserves? Uh... <laughs> Div There's four, like, div three. <laughs> I yeah, I give you guys around div four, div four, div five, that range rather than div three. Mm. Div three, I'm thinking more teams like Xylo and such, but we can typically defeat. We can typically defeat people that ping for div three, but you see, I, some people are overconfident and ping for div yeah. three. They're actually div six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I actually do have to get going, but thanks yeah, guys yeah. for being here. Uh, congrats right. again, Solver, and we'll. See you all Thank on the you. stream next time. Thank you guys for the follows and the tips. Much love to you guys. Hope you have a great day. Peace out. All right. See you guys.